Hey, poker people, thank you so much for tuning in to another Walking Wednesday episode number 34 coming at you. I am in the backyard doing a little bit of uh, grilling, cooking some uh, bacon-wrapped asparagus and tri-tip for dinner tonight. So I figured it's a little, little good time while I'm waiting for that tri-tip to finish to hit you with some poker goodness. Now, I was thinking earlier today about uh, following poker or pre-flop poker ranges, right? You have ranges in the EP, the MP, the cutoff, the button, the small blind that you open raised with when it's folded around to you. Well, here is the most important thing about ranges. You do not want to follow them blindly. You've done work off the felt to figure out what ranges you want to open with, what frequencies you want to play with, right? But occasionally, you need to stray outside of your ranges based on the players yet to act. So let's say you're in the cutoff and you have very aggressive button, small blind, and big blind players who love to three bet. Now, you can stick with your normal ranges, but you have to fight back against um, a little bit more frequent three bets. Or what you can do is decrease your ranges in order to have a stronger range in general, which allows you to fight back more often against their three bets. So these guys, they're thinking you're going to fold a lot because you're a tight, aggressive player. Well, You've changed your ranges. You're not opening with a 7-6 anymore. Maybe the worst suited connector is Jack-10. You're not opening with the A-7 anymore. Maybe the worst ace is Ace-10. You know, you just have stronger ranges so that you're defending a little bit more, more frequently. If you're defending more frequently, you are making their three bets much less profitable, or their three bet bluffs, I should say. Because you're coming back over the top, and especially versus those small blinds, maybe you're doing a lot more calling, uh, and you're playing them post-flop in position in a bigger pot. Now, they did make the three bet and you just called, so it's possible that they do have a stronger hand. At least the perceived range is stronger than yours. But they didn't realize, they don't realize that you uh, shrunk your open raising range so that you're so that you could defend more frequently right that's right there so maybe you do have stronger hands than they think you could have which is pretty good now that's one of the benefits of shrinking your ranges when you have aggressive players yet to act there's also the flip side of the coin what if you have very loose passive players or what if you have nitty players who really like to fold a lot in the big blind and the small blind? Well, these are great reasons to increase your open raising range, especially in the cutoff and the button, the two best positions at the table. Now, when you have calling stations in the blind, especially if they're really weak post flop, these are great guys to be raising against because they're going to be calling with a lot of weaker hands. You might be able to go as far down as like queen seven suited and jack seven suited raising. If they're calling with weaker queens, weaker jacks, a ton of tens, and then plenty of weaker nines and eights, hey, you've got the better hand right now. You have a great chance to make money. Plus, with their bad play post flop, you can take advantage of this. And what if the opposite kind of holds true? They're not fish in the blinds, but instead, they're tight aggressive players um, who fold a lot, or nitty players who fold a lot to raises, right? Well, there you go. You're open raising a little bit more frequently, so you can steal those blinds a little bit more frequently. So using pre-flop opening ranges is good, but do not stick to them 100%. Judge what range you should be raising based on the players yet to act and adjust accordingly. Alrighty, y'all. Thank you so much for listening while I cook up some tri-tip right here. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And please pick up Preflop Online Poker if you haven't done so already on Amazon in um, ebook, audiobook, and paperback forms. And I will catch you on the flip side.